Hi, this is Krista McCarthy for Group 2. For our group project, we implemented a computer versus human checker game with the computer using Minimax for its gaming logic. The slideshow will automatically play, so you can just sit back and enjoy. And if you'd like to advance faster, you can click on a slide. For this presentation, I will cover project overview, we will explain Minimax, and then explain the application of Minimax, which includes creating the tree and applying the heuristic value. We'll discuss the playing of the game and have a discussion of the results and conclusion. For our project, we created a checkers game where a human player can play against a computer. The computer is able to see three moves ahead for all possible moves on the board, which is obviously more than a human can. To determine which path the computer will choose, Minimax will be applied. The heuristic value for the path will be the difference of the black pieces and the red pieces left on the board for the node at the third ply, or third level, of the tree. We also implemented a tie-breaking technique based on board location values. Here's a visual of what's happening in Minimax. On the right hand side we have a demo tree. The value that gets returned when using Minimax is 3. But if you look at the bottom of the tree you'll see that the best value is actually 9. So why don't we take the path that will lead us to the best value? Well, Minimax assumes that the other player won't let us take the 9 path because it wants to win. So it'll, it'll block that and more likely force us to take our worst path. So on each move, Minimax decides which is the best of the worst path. That's why it returns the minimum for the opponent move and maximum for the computer move and why 3 was determined to be our best path according to Minimax. Now that we've reviewed Minimax, let's look at how we create our game tree. You're going to see that our game tree gets pretty big pretty fast even with 3 tiers. If you look at the boards below, you'll see on the computer's turn, it will look at all the possible moves for that turn. And then it'll choose the first move and follow that path. So in this case, the black first move for black can only go to one square. And then it'll look at all the possible red moves based off that one black move. Then, following along the same logic, it looks at, it takes the first red piece, looks to see where it can move that to, and then looks at all the possible black moves based on the state of the board after moving that red piece. Now keep in mind this is only from choosing the first move for each possible move and for our game we're gonna have to look at every possible move for each state of those three tiers. With the last slide, you get an idea of how quickly the tree can grow. We're only going three tiers because of the size that it can become. Let's look at that one move from a checker perspective with a tree visual. So here we choose the first checker that the computer can move in that first set of moves, just like we did in the last slide. That black checker could only make one move. So we look to see where the five red checkers can possibly move if we move if we made that black move and then we have to look to see where are the possible black moves that can be made for each possible red move what we've created here is the leftmost branch of our three ply gaming tree and it may be clear that we're taking a depth approach The last sh slide showed creating our leftmost branch. 
We continue along the possible moves and choose the next possible move to create our next branch. And just like we did before, analyze the black moves, analyze the red moves, and then analyze the black moves again for each state based on the move that we could possibly choose. And we will continue to do this, as I said, for all possible pieces that could move. So we looked at a tree from a checkers perspective, but here's a slightly more realistic view of how the tree is seen by our application and what it looks like at each node. It shows the state of the board at each node. And um, at the leaf node, it'll check the difference of the black pieces left to red pieces left to create the heuristic value as shown in our next slide. Once the tree is fully created, we can apply a heuristic value to the leaf nodes of the tree. The heuristic value will be the number of black moves, I'm sorry, the number of black pieces minus the number of red pieces for the state of the board at that leaf node. So if this was the board at the end of one path, then we would have nine black pieces minus five red pieces giving that board state or leaf node a value of four. The bigger the difference, the better the heuristic value. And of course, the number could be negative. As a tiebreaker, if two compared leaf nodes have the same value, then we check their secondary value, which is based on the positions of the board, as shown by this chart. If there is still a tie after applying the secondary value, then the node value, or path to take, will be chosen at random. So now let's put all the pieces together for playing the game and see how the computer decides to move. The computer maps out all of the moves for three moves ahead from its current possible move. It then calculates the heuristic values for each state of the board at the third tier and performs the minimax algorithm to show the backed up values. So if this were our tree, the path with the three value, which is in this case the first checker, would be deemed the computer's best move and that's the move it would make. There are a number of things to consider when making the AI functionality for this game. For example, number of plies for a game tree, the heuristic values, tie-breaking functionality, multiple jumping abilities, how to handle pings. In one of the first slides, I mentioned that the computer can see three moves ahead, which is more than a human. So why is the computer so easy to beat? Minimax and heuristics didn't much help the computer to win in our game. Because we are only looking three moves ahead, we can easily end up on a local maxima that will ultimately lead to the computer's loss. Also, our heuristics don't distinguish king pieces from soldiers, which may have added more accuracy to the value of the board. The other problem was that near the end of the game, the computer sometimes just stalls by moving the, a king back and forth between places, waiting for the red to change the state of the board enough to go a different path which can make for a boring game. So in conclusion, a three-tier game tree is too small to help the computer to win. We have the problem of local maxima. Creating a bigger game tree could give us better results, and a full game tree could give us perfect results, but now we're talking large amounts of data and processing. If we're going to go for a bigger tree, then we should also use alpha beta pruning to help control its size. Also, if we had a more advanced AI with learning capabilities, then the computer could determine the smartness of its opponent by watching patterns in the red's moves. So for example, if the computer noticed red does not always choose the best move for itself, then it could risk to choose a higher value path instead of one mapped out by Minimax. Overall, while our computer is no genius, our checkers game is basic and fun.
Thanks for watching our slideshow. The game is available to play at www.e3pro.com.